Hello, happy Thursday, May 14th, 2020. Looking at Exodus 14, verses 10 through 14, and, uh, and also verses 24 through chapter 15, verse 3. I would encourage the members of Trinity Lutheran Church to listen uh, to the end of the video as there will be an announcement at the end of the video. Exodus 14 reads, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, It was because there were no graves in Egypt that you took us to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Wasn't this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the salvation from the Lord, which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You must wait quietly. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian forces from the pillar of fire and cloud. Then he confused the Egyptian forces. He jammed their chariot wheels, and they had difficulty driving them. The Egyptians said, We must flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hands over the sea, and the waters will come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea returned to its normal place. While the Egyptians were fleeing from it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the middle of the sea. The waters came back and covered the chariots and the charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh that went into the sea after the Israelites. Not even one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the middle of the sea on dry land, and the waters were like a wall for them on their right and on their left. On that day, the Lord saved Israel from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the mighty hand which the Lord put into action against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in Moses his servant. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. So here in this section of scripture, you have the Israelites at the sea. And they're kind of at a dead end. And now Mo, or Pharaoh and his forces are, are, are catching up uh, to the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel is wondering what happened. Remember, this is right after the slavery uh, in Egypt and after they had escaped the slavery in Egypt from the plague of the uh, death of the firstborn sons. So the Israelites there are, are, are at the seashore wondering, why are we in this spot? It would have been better for us if we would have just stayed in Egypt. Moses, why did you take us out of here? It showed a lack of trust, didn't it? A lack of trust in God and his plans. Now, we have the benefit, right? We have the benefit of having the whole of Scripture revealed to us, both Old Testament and New Testament. And, and we have some wonderful promises that perhaps are more clearly spelled out in the New Testament than they are in the Old Testament. Promises like uh, God will work out all things for the good of those who love him, and so on. Certainly, the Old Testament believers had uh, various promises like that too, but perhaps not as clearly spelled out as the New Testament Christians do. But yet, they're at this juncture. God had delivered them from the slavery, the brutal slavery in Egypt. And they're saying, it would be better for us not to be here. 
And Moses basically says, be patient. You know, we, we struggle with that too, don't we? Lord, why am I in this situation? Lord, it would be better if this was done. Lord, it'd be great if this would happen in my life. Perhaps with the virus running around, we thought at times to ourselves, why? What good can this do? What good is this doing for me or for the world or for my family or for the country or whatever the case may be? We need to remember one thing, that the promises of God often deal with our spiritual nature, right? Um, uh, the, the idea that God will work out all things for the good of those who love him is a promise for our spiritual welfare. And so we might wonder what's all happening here, and, and, and perhaps we don't have a a clear picture on it or a clear answer, and we may not for, for some time. But we can take the promise to the bank. Moses essentially told the Israelites to be patient because what was going to happen? The Israelites, as you see in the picture, would walk through on dry ground with walls of water on each side, making it through safely. And then as the Egyptians tried to also run through on that dry ground, the Israelites were already all through, and God brought the waves back to where they were and drowned the Egyptian army, or at least much of it, in the sea. You see, the Israelites went from what good can come from this to, oh, our God can do anything. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have an all-powerful God, a God who loves us, a God who, who sent his only son into this world to take away our sins, to give us that hope of heaven. He can do anything. From the parting of the Red Sea, or from the parting of the sea, and allowing the Israelites to come through on dry ground to, to defeating uh, several of their enemies when they had no business winning a war, to the miracles of both the Old and the New Testament where those things didn't seem possible. We have a powerful God. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, trust in his promises because he can do anything and he will help you. And he will be with you always to the very end of the age. And he will turn out all things for our good. Put your trust in him. Because even in the most dire of circumstances like the Egyptians were in, or sorry, like the Israelites were in against the Egyptians, God turned that out for their good in a very, very obvious way. Maybe ours won't be so obvious but you can take it to the bank that God will continue to fulfill his promises for you and me. We'll sing our hymn for the day today, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain. There'll be a short introduction, then we'll join together in singing. Please join me in singing if you're comfortable. Come you faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought his Israel into joy from sadness. See the spring of souls today. Christ has burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death, 
as our Son has risen. All the winter of our sins, long and dark is flying. From his light to whom we give, blood and praise undying. Neither could the gates of death, nor the tomb's dark portal, nor the watchers, nor the seal, hold him as a mortal. But today among his own, Christ appeared bestowing blessed peace which evermore passes human knowing. Come you faithful raise the strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought his Israel into joy from sadness. Let's join together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you that just like with the Israelites of old, as you saved them from the Egyptians, you promise to be with us always, and you promise to turn out all things for the good of those who love you according to your good purpose. We ask that you instill that confidence in, in your promises in each one of us, uh, that whatever struggles we, we may be going through uh, because of the virus or because of something else in our lives, uh, we, we ask that uh, you instill in each of us a, a faith that clings to those type of promises. Um, and that you will fulfill those promises for us, as you always have, and you always will. We ask that you be with all people. Um, we ask that you continue to um, be with those who are sick. Uh, and if it is your will, bring them back to full health. We also ask that you uh, continue to slow the spread of the virus as you see fit. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Uh, Trinity Lutheran members, uh, if you didn't get the email yesterday, uh, I will be mailing out a letter also this morning. The council decided yesterday uh, afternoon and evening uh, to resume public worship here at Trinity in Bangor, um, and that will be this Sunday, May 17th at 10.15 a.m. Um, in the letter, there is a whole bunch of... Um, precautions and other things that we're taking and asking you as well to observe uh, when you come to worship, uh, whether that's this Sunday or any future Sunday. Um, so please look at that. Uh, if you want to read the letter, uh, it will be posted on our website, www.trinitybangor.org. Once again, that number or that, uh, that uh, website address is www.trinitybangor.org. Uh, there should be a link on the front page for that to read the letter. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else to highlight for you uh, this morning. Uh, certainly wish you God's blessings. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. God's blessings. Bye-bye.